the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Queen of Embers. Um, I'm Daniel Fox. We're going to do some gaming tonight. Uh, we spent the first half of our game session transcribing characters to our new character folios, which is super cool. You get it now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Waterstones. It's available everywhere. You can buy it everywhere. It's not just drive through RPG. It's literally in stores, which is oh. our, will be our fourth product on shelves next nice. to the Mongo Spyhander RPG oh. and Player's Handbook in December. Game Master Folio to follow soon, and the new Dark Astral. So, uh, you guys are probably already singing if you're watching this video. So anyhow, we're going to jump right in. Um, normally, when we play, we record an initiative. Uh, you guys, those who are watching us or listening to us, you can't see it. It's on a board over on that side by K, in fact. Um, Actually, you can see it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can probably see it in the little in the bottom in the bottom of the frame. Right. Yeah. We normally record an issue there, but we're gonna test something new. We got some new rules we're gonna play with. The first one's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because it is going to change the way we handle initiative. It's going to create some interesting kind of chaos elements, I feel. And but we're basically introducing rounds into Zweihander. And the way that we do that is by rolling initiative every single round. Hmm. So your initiative value will change every single round. Now, <clears throat> here's, some of the, here's some of the immediate impacts. Obviously, with the smuggler, smuggler always goes first. So at the beginning, of the first round of combat, you go. And you still have your initiative in your initiative order. This is before. But as opposed to, like, because in, in, remember, in Zwider, there really aren't any rounds. There's just turns. Like, you have a turn, and then your next turn comes up later on after you go around all the characters. So we're going to try different initiatives, and this kind of comes from, from two different places. The first is, this is an old D&D holdover. Um, I, I've been thinking about this, about what I, what I read, the things I really like about D&D, and I always thought it was interesting to roll initiative fresh every single round, because you can never guess where somebody was going to go. Um, it created an interesting kind of tension, I feel, between players and, and monsters um, that, that hasn't been able to be replicated within the initiative. Now, there's some complications there, such as what happens when you wait. Well, I don't know yet. Um, so for now, we're simply going to say wait is off the table. Okay. All right, we're just going to remove that for now. Um, and we'll handle it in, in a more organic way somehow. Don't know how yet, but we're going to figure it out. Um, the second place this comes from is actually from a game that hasn't been announced yet um, that we're working on. Uh, some of the people around the table know what it is. But um, part of this game will use rotating initiative. So we're going to test this out ourselves in a real play environment, make sure it all syncs up, um, and we'll adjust as we need to. So the first thing you're going to do is take your card. And this card is a little tent, and it has your name on the front and the back. I would like for you to roll your initiative and then write your value on the front and the back of it, and then hand it back to me. Mm -hmm. This for you, Walter, or Jonathan, or Warren. <laughs> Seriously? You and you now? Banneker? It's not Bannister. It's Banneker. What's that? You close to the... Banneker? I thought that was the, that's the original spelling I always but What's the <laughs> spelling on your pet and your character? I don't even know. It doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't The Banneker is in my previous game's room. Yeah. So be sure... Write the value big so we can see it. Oh. Don't use a marker. Just use a pencil. A right big. Big. You're be rewriting it multiple times. Right big. 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 Mmm. Mm, big. <laughs> Should we write our, uh, our perception bonus on it too? Nope. Just here. Alright. Oh, John Candy. All right. Won't that fix if there's Ooh. equals? We'll handle that in just a moment. Okay. So Warren's 11. 10. I'm going to arrange them on my Game Master screen here. I'm missing some. 14. And we've got a 20. Nice. Jeez. Jonathan and Elisa, who has a higher perception, perception about us? Uh, I have a seven. Seven. Ah, roll off. 
Roll up. Roll up. Six. Ten. Okay. So it'll go Banneker, Jonathan, Elisa, Terawin, Warren, then Harper. Now. Warren? Warren? That's right. So you can see on my Game Master screen, there's little tents, and these will, and these are going to basically change round by round. Uh, we will re-roll them. As you complete your turn, I will hand your card to you. And then we roll initiative again and put it back up here and just go through the same motions. So that's the first major change um, we're going to play with. The second is not as complicated, um, but will require some... It will change the way that we can have run combat. And see what that initiative does. And that is, first off, we're eliminating strike again. That's gone. Exclamation point. Uh, it was kind of a, an int intriguing way to introduce multiple attacks that didn't quite achieve what I think I really wanted to do with it. And I think it was a little more complicated than it needed to be. I was basically trying to solve a problem by creating a mechanized drill when I really just needed a freaking hammer. So here's the hammer. You want to make multiple attacks? Make multiple attacks. You want to make multiple perilous stunts? Make multiple perilous stunts. Here is the caveat. <clears throat> so let's say Banneker. What do you? What, what's your weapon that you have? What's the weapon that you use normally? Uh, I have a hunting bow and a, 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 a sword. Okay, so let's let's use the hunting bow for example. You come into combat. It's already loaded. Toying, you fire for one AP. You load again for one AP. And then you fire again for one AP. That first attack may have been challenging. The second attack is hard, meaning you have declining accuracy for every additional attack or every additional perilous stunt. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you do, so if you say I make a melee attack, boom, I hit, I do this much damage, I want to strike again, cool. Um, your next attack will be at a lesser difficulty rating than the previous one. So if your first attack was was Easy, the next one will be routine, and the next one will be standard, as long as it occurs during the same turn. So similar to what D&D &D does, which is declining accuracy, but as opposed to rolling twice, like, you're not rolling 2d20, you're rolling, basically the way it would work is, let's let's use, Mike, let's narrate how this would work. Mike, right. you're in combat, somebody's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. Uh-huh. What do you do? Hold my gun, I shoot them. Okay, so you draw your weapon, mm. gun in hand. That's, uh, we'll assume, zero AP, and you just fire for a ranged attack. Uh -huh. Okay. That attack is going to be easy. Okay. So you roll your dice. We'll pretend you rolled your dice. Roll the dice. Cool. You missed. Oh, no. What do you want to do? Oh, I'll shoot again. I got a repeating weapon. Oh, repeating weapon. Perfect. Okay. Well, that first attack was routine, so your next attack is standard. Okay. He cool. rolls. Boom. You hit. Awesome. Cool. Great. All right. What do you want to do now? Damage, damage, damage. Well, let's try to finish this guy off. One more shot, because that's... Repeating, you can make three shots. Oh, that's right. You got a repeating weapon. Perfect. So your next attack is going to be challenging. Right. So you can see that it basically stair steps down. The more you attack, or the more perilous stunts you use on the same turn, the more difficult it becomes for them to happen. So. So balancing like off-handed weapon. That's right. That's right. Okay. So like an old D and D. So. Well, we have that same thing with off-handed. We did. Yeah. yeah. So so the next att next question may be, well, I have a mortuary sword. And I am toe to toe. <laughs> Why, in fact, I do. Terran, what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm going to attack, attack, I'm attack. I'm going to knock him down. Okay, so you <laughs> make a knock down your perilous stunt, it fails. Okay, then I'm gonna try again. Perfect. You can do that now. Yeah. You can try a failed attack again or a failed perilous stunt again. You just not just like one and done. You can now attempt again. Okay, cool. You knock off his feet. What happens next? Then it him. Cool. So a melee attack. Mm -hmm. Awesome. He's on the ground. It's an easy test. Yeah. Boom, you hit him. You get some fortune points. What do you want to do? I want to attack him two more times. Cool. Pull two more fortune points out of the pool. Make one melee attack. The next one is now going to be routine. Mm -hmm. And the third one will be standard. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, you could pair all these perilous stunts and attacks up. I think it's going to have some interesting effects on how combat works. I feel that it will give us an opportunity to really just, like, punch someone down quick if you want to. But it's gonna it's gonna have some interesting effects to how we utilize fortune pool and how we strategize in combat. I'm genuinely curious to see how it's gonna work. I'm not sure how it's going to. We haven't done this before in this current rule set. I think it'll be fun. Um, and you guys already have your bonus fortune point I gave you pr or fate point previously uh, that you recorded some number of yeah. weeks back when we we're all here. Mm -hmm. So um, that's gonna be basically you're gonna get a jail free card while we play test this new approach. You have too many fate points anyway. 
<laughs> Speak for yourself. Give it time. <laughs> Some people don't. Some people actually lost fate points around the yeah. table. Yeah. Who's burned fate points this entire this campaign? Raise your hand. I have not on this character, but I have on my. Yeah. That's nice right. Season. Kay's burned two. Mm -hmm. Adam's burned two. Oh, I don't know. What? Adam's always at least one. Yeah. Adam's always and then two. Walter's burned hey, one. Our previous yeah, character. Yeah, I in like one of the first fights. So I think I burned one in the first fights too. Yeah, I've only played twice. What's up, Walter? Well, just uh, so is it all for you've enjoyed actually? Subsequent <laughs> uh, actions of the same type move up the difficulty track by one if you do them twice. Like, let's that. say. I go for a chokehold. Yes. I fail. Okay. I now go for dirty tricks. Yes. Is that... Does that get made at the base, or is that now plus 10 as well, because they're both perilous stunts? It'll be, well, it'll be minus 10, because it moves Whatever. down. Whatever. Yes, yes, it would. So that's a, a success or a failure, yes. So the more, basically, the, the harder you push, the more you try to do in one turn with perilous stunts and, <clears throat> and attack actions, despite whether you succeed or not, will have declining accuracy. I get the idea of declining accuracy, but I need more specifics. Okay. So, the way you described it to him, he succeeded in a perilous stunt, and then his attack action was back to the base. Oh, so yes, it's I like see attack what you're actions and perilous stunts are on their own tracks together. Oh. How does that Correct. work? Correct. So, good, good question. It's a great question. So, let's say you use a perilous stunt and you're taking a you're doing a knockdown. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would tell you your chance is routine. Okay. You hit him. Cool. He's on the ground. Yep. So now you're striking while he's on the ground. Uh, you're now using an attack action, and because he's on the ground, it's going to be easy. So, to your question about declining accuracy, it's declining accuracy within the with the same types of action. So yes. if you use multiple parallel stunts, mm -hmm. it's declining accuracy. Multiple attacks, attack actions, parallel, a declining accuracy. But attack actions and parallel stunts are gauged independent of one another when you pair them up like you normally would for their difficulty rating. Gotcha. So you can still do a parallel stunt and attack like we normally do. Yeah. <clears throat> but then on top of that, you could do another perilous stunt or attack yeah. at, at a lesser rate. Imagine... Exactly. Right, yes. So imagine this. Let's say that you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody. You get your mortuary sword out. You swing. Boom, you hit him. Or her. They don't suffer any damage. Cool, I'm going to take him down. They go off their feet. You stick your sword in the ground, I'm going to drop down and pull them in a chokehold. You could do that. You can absolutely do that now. You have that ability. Like, if you discover, like, as opposed to wasting your turn after being like, I didn't do enough damage to penetrate his armor, you could choose, like, you know what? I'm going to try again. Or I'm going to do something different because you didn't know. And I think this will give you a little bit more freedom in action. Um, and I think it's going to have some really intriguing results. I think we'll like how... It, I think in my head, I think it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I think we'll like it. But we'll, okay. we'll play it out. We'll see how it works. So let me just... Just for Please, further ahead. clarification, I'm, I'm specifically using the combat reference guide in the back of the character portfolio. Yes. This seems to be the uh, the categories of actions that are pooled, that are basically like linked together, where subsequent types of this have diminishing returns. That's right. So if you did an attack action, a perilous stunt, and a special action at the same time, those would all be at base chance. But if I did two special actions, the second special action would have the... Increased difficulty, correct? So if I did channel power and then inspiring words, for example, those are both in the special actions category. Yes, but you can already use multiple special actions together. You just can't use perilous stunts and attack action categories. You can't use multiple attack actions or multiple perilous stunts. So that's but that's that's what I'm asking. Does the second special action does this diminishing return apply no. to those as well? No, strictly perilous stunts and attack okay, actions. Okay, so just perilous stunts and attack actions, and now you can do multiples of no. diminishing returns. That's right, that's okay, right. Okay, got it. And they are judged together. That's right. Or they're judged separately, rather. Okay. That's right, that's right. Okay, so got are, it. are you okay with a person being attacked by one other person six times before they get to go, without the use of any fortune or misfortune points? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. How would that happen? Uh, like, so just if you I'm, went I'm last at, and then went first. Yeah, I'm at a fourteen. My opponent, my opponent is Elisa, and then next what? time I, I roll above her and she's below right. me. So this makes higher initiative even more valuable now. <laughs> but but remember this. This is the interesting thing about this: is people who have higher initiative values now have. It's not static initiative. Hmm. It's it's dynamic initiative. So there's going to be a lot of tension around rolling well with your initiative values now. Yeah. 
Like it's going to have an interesting. But but yeah, the the reality is, if it's the first round of combat and there's no action points in play, if Banneker was attacking Terwin, if Banneker, Jonathan, and Elise all attack Terwin, he attacked nine times before he gets to go. No, no, no. That yep. that I could see coming if if it was, um, if it was Terwin attacked Banneker mm-hmm. after Banneker, and mm-hmm. then um, like or actually Harper attacked Banneker mm-hmm. three times. And then the new round comes up, Harper's at the top, and he attacks him three more times. That's right. It's probably going to be the exact opposite because he has a way better reception. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's based on rules. But, but the, 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 intrinsically, the answer is yes, that's fine. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. Um, the quick is your action points refresh after you've taken your turn. Right, so then that would mean that Banneker would have to hold all three of his action points to be able to try and dodge three of those six attacks. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna it's really gonna introduce some some interesting it's gonna play out strangely at first. Mm-hmm. It's gonna feel weird. Um, mm-hmm. and we should play with it to see how it works. Mm-hmm. Because it's we're gonna end up with these really weird kind of corner cases where we're like, well shit, do I hold my action points? Do I even attack? What do I do? Like some people may simply say well, I know he's weaker, so I'm going to just lay into him. I'm going to attack. I'm going to kill him. Kill that Kill that. That enemy. Others may say, well, I don't want to focus on defense because I've got a lot of people in front of me. So I think that what we could do, as an example, um, is that mm-hmm. you could potentially, I don't know. Let's, let's play that as it is for right. now, and we'll see how it works out. Right. And it's kind of relevant that we're starting... All this now because that may have been one of the weapons that we got removed. That's what I think it is. What weapon are you looking for? Do sock. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Is it it should be in the back. Uh, no, I think that's one of the ones that. I think you got was the two. Oh yeah. That's why I'm like trying to. Is figure it out is it in Mongosh? No, no, I don't think so. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it? Do you have a just sock right now? Yeah. Well, we oh, it got renamed. That's, that's the hunting that's, sword. Okay, I thought yes. I, when I was looking it up, I was like, that's got to be what this yeah. is now. But that's the hunting sword. Good. good, good catch. I was like, oh man, um, why am I not finding this? <laughs> When I noticed in the uh, character portfolio under Fearless Stunts, the knockout action does not have an exclamation point. Hmm. It's been nerfed. <laughs> it's been nerfed. It's been nerfed. <laughs> it's only knockout. Oh. Knockout! <laughs> so let's, let's dive right in where we left off last time. You had just entered the Undercroft through a confusing series of passages and had crawled your way through these really tightly cramped caverns and discovered that the Undercroft is clearly some sort of burial ground. Um, And as with all burial grounds, there you have kind of encountered a group of uh, tomb robbers. You caught in the act uh, in a very vicious pitched battle where several of them were slain uh, at the end of your swords and you chased the others off or let them negotiate for their freedom at least uh, much to the chagrin of some around the table but that's okay we move forward you're standing in this room full of these leaky walls the cell, there's almost like a damp cellar but the cellar walls are lined with bones and this huge kind of circular large chamber and in the middle of this chamber is this huge this wide pillar and if you remember the pillar was laying with the skulls of the dead with these tiny like drawers like almost like uh, apothecary or pharmacy drawers or wooden drawers that are pulled out all over the place all around this thing where they had robbed it free of any riches the earth has shifted here and there's a few broken uh, vessels uh, with bones and dust lying on the ground in the midst of the melee. Let's do a quick damage condition check. Uh, Harper, where are you at? Unharmed. Okay, Terwin? 
Uh, even though it's not marked, I am lightly wounded. Banneker? Good harm. I had to check my old to make sure. Elisa? Moderately wounded. Okay. Jonathan? I don't believe unharmed, but I gotta check my old one too. And then Warren? I'm unharmed. Armed. Okay. The remnants of what they had plundered is laying in sacks all around, and if we recall from last time, Warren had dressed himself in such fineries, standing tall and proud, or Warren? Question mark. Warren? <clears throat> this strange darkness, not a strange darkness, but a, a darkness seems to claw at the edges of whatever. What light do you have? A lantern or a torch? <coughs> lantern. Lantern, that's right. In fact, there's still a lantern here, kind of shut with its panes open, shining toward this large pillar where all the drawers have been pulled out. The bodies of the dead lie on the ground. You have, I believe you had already kind of stole or taken, looted them, looted the dead, so to speak, and began filling your pockets with their goods, some of you at least. I had to put mine back, so I think Warren's the only one. Warren, question mark. Yep. Dressed in such fineries, Warren. <clears throat> Resplendent. He stands shining like a beacon as the light scintillates across the large hoop kind of earrings he's plunged into his ears, this tiara across his head, these rings upon his fingers, these necklaces around his around his his chest, a choker, bracers, bracelets, a huge girdle. He looks like he was he looks like he crawled from a crypt. And like he was, he is dressed as a king would be buried. Or in this case, the a priest. As this is clearly a place where the Eloranites have been buried. This chamber in particular is where the Elorans have been burying their dead. For years and years. Everybody have what they need. Yep. Suppose we'll be moving on. We'll be moving on to an area I don't want to go, but it's the only way it seems. Well, that, that's right. You had put them to the sword, and they had told you a, an intriguing tale of what is in the chambers beyond where you wish to go. Because remember, you're trying to go through the Undercroft to reach Almeron's Gate, and they told you if you they if you follow this map, you'll get there. But you'll be going through a place that is that is haunted. The shades of the, they said the shades of the past dwell within. Ghosts. So spirits. I ain't never seen no ghost. I am afraid of ghosts. Uh, somebody Someone was going to say it. it. <laughs> I wanted it to be bad at it. How are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> and if there is such a thing, then I suppose we should shine our lights at it, because they said they retreat from the light. So if you see anybody wailing or uh, floating about, I suppose uh, just shine your light at them, right? <clears throat> well, this is double down on the lanterns. Make sure that everyone, I mean... It's another God, one. Light it. There's another one over there. They left that one, so that's three lanterns. Yes, it was holding mine. I got mine. You put yours on the ground. Ah, oh, yes. I'll uh, sheathe my sword and I'll go and pick up the lantern. Okay. Coins and such could have spill beneath your feet. Coins of an age, of an older age, the second age. <clears throat> what? I mean, uh, I'll take a quick moment to look at them. What symbols are on there? On the coins. They are the symbols of the ancient house Rowan, Second Age. And King I, rec Solomon I recognize Rowan. that. House. Oh yes, okay. Solomon Rowan, the last Rowan king who was killed by his son at the turn of the Second Age. And if I remember right, because I wasn't playing in the Second Age, um, <laughs> Rowan is the house that, like, supposedly times were good. That's right. Times That's what were good. Says times were, yeah. 223 years ago. That's the bastard king's lineage. That's right. 
Lysandra from uh, Rebirthed from Dun Hollow Mystery. Through her, uh, through her, oh, yes. through her uh, <laughs> many bodies. Okay, yeah, it's all, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at this over here. It's uh, from a better age. So I was rowing. Hmm. Right. Well, you want us to do something with it? No, it's just interesting how things change. Well, I mean, if it's gonna... belong to Lorna, it's like looking like. I think it's all cursed. I wouldn't touch a piece of it. Because I look at Warren, who's like covered in it, and just <laughs> shaking my head. Warren, how are you going to sneak around looking like that? <clears throat> There's no one to see us. We're all down deep in the earth. When we come up, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. His voice is powerful and commanding. There is no hesitance in it. This is not the Warren that you know. I don't think that's Warren anymore. And what is it? It's not Warren. I'm standing right here. Yes, and I'm curious. What what does he think you are? Stand where? Let's move. This place gives me the creeps and I want to be out of this. Right, we're burning candlelight. Alright. Elise is gonna pick up the other lantern. Let's go. Yeah. Like I said, you got it. Light it. Terwin will lead the way. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, light a torch off of. Pull my sword and light a torch. Okay. Elisa pulls the compass and is kind of leading from, or at least stating direction from the middle. Okay. I'll ask Jonathan if he wants one of these pistols that we uh, took off these. Uh, well, it might take a bit to fix them. Remember, they all jammed. <laughs> yeah. Above board, it takes about an hour to fix them. Okay. I'll let you fix them. <laughs> yeah, because they're all ruined. Yeah. I thought only one exploded. Well, yeah, yeah, one completely exploded, so that's why there's five of them. Right. Instead of six. But they would take an hour to repair them okay. before they could be used again. That's right. All right, question will you take them or you leave them? Keep in mind they have encumbrance tied to them. I believe pistol is two or three? It's two. It's two. Elisa literally can carry nothing other than this lantern. I can carry one. I don't intend to fire it if you want to. Uh, Please. Turn that it would help me out scrap. greatly. Right. And we split up that uh, shot amongst us, I believe, right? There were 30 shot altogether. But right now, only me and uh, Banneker have uh, function pistols. I have no use for such thing as I point to my missing eye, my eye patch. So how much are you, did you want to take half of that? How much can you carry? Uh, or are you talking about the gunshot, or are you talking about, uh, I mean, I have, I think, 16 shot left on me now. Okay. That's what I need for my other book. Okay. How much There's nothing else I intended to, uh... I only had six shot beforehand, so you can, nothing you else can we can turn the ones in. we don't need into much needed uh, coin, right? That's my whole point of taking them. <laughs> well, I'm certainly not cut touching the uh, yes. the the treasures of the dead. I have no qualms about this. Yeah, Jonathan, I thought uh, this could be a, a good way to pave our way home more than anything. <clears throat> Let all. Uh, Pistolier over here, a man who measures. I do have a bandolier. Can I just put all the pistols on the bandolier? Sure. Yeah. Sure, we're going to take the. Um... Uh, I have a movement speed of one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I take all five of them. You can't fast travel until you. I can't uh... fast travel until I. Because <laughs> 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 you outer worlds, that is a perk first level. <laughs> you actually got pause menu and just explode with. I got 14 shots left. <laughs> Brooms and <laughs> potatoes, crab and fall. And cheese, <laughs> teddy bears, lots <laughs> of teddy bears, cups and plates. And I just needed to get rid of one of those. You took one, I took two, and you took one. Oh, we're only taking four because the other one exploded. Up to the dog. Right, there were six of them total. One exploded. There's six. Oh, five. then there's still one on the ground. 
I don't have enough room for it, guys. Anybody want it? Anybody got room to take this? Your Majesty, do you have room to take this? Of course. What, what gun is it? Flint, flint, flint my pistol. Okay. <laughs> Jan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I've put an X by him. Not to be confused with jellied. Mm. That's an inappropriate joke that could be saved right now. That's that what we're looking to. <laughs> so I was gonna take thirteen of the shot. Just believe in that. That give me a total of twenty-seven. That's fine. So if you can take, you can take seventeen if you want. Okay. Quarter mastering. It's fun. And necessary. That's, That's why we're playing Zwei Hinder and Count. <laughs> Two handed account. Yeah. Oh, I was supposed to put it on both sides. You write 20 on the other side of that warrant. 20? Grim oh. Perilous QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. I should have just like QuickBooks. It's pretty grim and perilous to me. <laughs> Black Lotus Notes. Yes. <laughs> there, you there you go. Nice. That's an old, old reference that no one will get. <laughs> no one no one uses Lotus Notes anymore. Oh yes they do. Yeah, really? They do. Yes. Who's using Lotus Notes at this point? I can't say who. Seriously, uh, I cannot say. <laughs> but yes, there are still people. I know people still using it too. Wild. Right. It's still very popular in insurance and banking. Yep. Just because they just have not migrated not, away from they it. Because they, they don't want to learn new things. That's it. And this works, why break it? Or why get rid of it, right? I hated Lotus Notes. It's the shittiest metal system ever. So, where will you go from here? You have this rudimentary map that will doubtless take you toward Almeron's gates, but you can see a series of confusing, winding catacombs that lead through new chambers upon new chambers, and it is drawn in this kind of... It is actually... It's my apologies, it's not drawn. It's actually inked on the back of a goat skin. It's very old. Why don't you let me uh, take a look at that? You're in my mind. I'm going to ask you if it was something that would pique your interest. It will. Um, there are only two things that I am considered a uh, better than a journeyman at as an academic. That is uh, stars and uh, antiquities. Unfortunately, I cannot navigate you by the stars here, but... You gave me the second best thing. Though it only looks old. It's a, it's a, it's a fraud. Hmm. But yes, I can use this to, to guide our way. I believe uh, there's a compass as well. Hey. Hmm. You got a compass, right? Yeah. yeah all right. Um, out of curiosity, from mm -hmm. her being high earlier, is Elisa still kind of got her navigation sense going? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because you were like you critically succeeded something, didn't you? Critically succeeded on my true detective. Yes. Nice. That way, definitely that way. So she somewhat knows where she's going because she's high. All right. Last call before we set off into madness. Anything else we need to take care of? That's not. Nope. All right. <laughs> so I will go first. Okay. <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> I will attempt to decipher the map to plot a course of uh, direction. Okay. Go ahead and I would like for you to make either an education or a scrutinized test. Will Lisa assist? Absolutely. Yeah. Depending on which uh, Jonathan chooses. Uh, Education actually, is definitely the one I want. I actually have both. I, I was gonna say I can assist on either one of those two. I cannot. I, I have two. I have two. This will be a secret test. I'm it. Right. Secret test. Secret, secret. I got a secret. <laughs> All right. I have a base of 75. Don't forget your assistant. Uh, my primary die is red, pink is secondary. 
my Gatorade die. <laughs> I have a 36. I will keep that result. Okay. Following Jonathan and um, Elisa's guidance, you begin to you leave this chamber and you come to the first gate. You come through a small channel through the, uh, the back of the chamber and you come to a, a gate that is actually already been opened because they came this direction. If you remember, these gates run floor to ceiling, but they have this little kind of door fixed into them so you can see right through it. So you can have, you open the door and you pass through. And you feel this kind of cold wind kind of come sweeping through the tunnel. And you can feel the hackles in the back of your neck kind of rise as you all kind of, like the chill of winter air, perhaps if it's coming from somewhere above. It's just winter. As you press further, you come to a crossroads of the tunnel. And you can see at this crossroads, there is a inset kind of shelf thing where these skulls are basically piled up. And the tunnel goes to the left and to the right. You know that if you were to go left, uh, that it, sorry, if you were to go right, my apologies, it would probably take you where these tomb robbers came from originally. If you go left, it will take you toward what is simply marked on the on the um, map as first the burial chambers and then eventually into what's called the sepulcher. Oh yeah. And that is the direction that they take you. The left handed path as you make your way toward the burial chambers. There's not as much dripping water here as there was before. The floors and the in the in the in the vaulted ceilings that are pretty low are are actually well sealed, well kept. Um, it kind of rises above where you're at before. Um, there's no real inlets in these with bodies or bones or anything like that, but there are all these va like tall vases kind of lining the walls. And you get to a point where your your lantern's beginning to reach toward the darkness. And it feels like you're just continuing to walk closer and closer to this curtain of blackness. At first you thought it was just, you thought it was essentially a, a curtain, but your light will not penetrate it as you stand no more than five feet in front of it. The tor no, nor tor not neither your torch or the lantern will penetrate this blackness in front of you. Can I see through it with dark sense? No. <laughs> you approach and you're kind of almost alarmed to some degree. You look back behind you and you can, your torch and lantern kind of spreads its light down the hallway without fail. As you can see the tall vases on either side lining the lining the, um, the hallway. But as you turn toward, back toward the blackness, the light does not penetrate it. It eats at the edges of the torch as it flickers in hand, sputtering. It's almost dead. It's been about an hour. Yeah. It's, it's like, kind of like the darkness is in the shape of like a pillar or like a wall? It's like a, it's like the, the, the it's literally like if you were standing in, you're standing in the hallway, bolted as it is, and there's just darkness as if you as if you had no light. The light will not go through it, it will not pass through it, okay. but clearly it's empty space. You're in the Black Lodge, and you're trying to get through to... <laughs> with, the to with the lantern. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, uh, Try this first. I'll hand him the torch. What are you going to do with it? Press it into the darkness? <laughs> yeah. He moves his arm forward, and it's enveloped in shadow. And as he is enveloped in shadow, as are all of you, as it... <sighs> washes over you and it's completely pitch black and you can't see or hear or feel anything not the floor beneath of you not the warmth of the torch not the weight of the gaudiness around your neck Warren <laughs> not even the weight of your weapons at your side is it darkness? Is all I can see. <laughs> darkness. And 
for a moment, <laughs> what 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 does Harper do? Um, I mean, I would assume he already had his gun in his hand. Mm-hmm. So then, like, he would probably try to instinctively like look at his hand, and then probably not be able to see his hand. As you turn toward your hand and you feel your arm move out, there's just this strange silvery mist. And almost as if you're looking into the well of souls, if you're looking into the stars itself. Um, you can see its phantasm take shape in hand. You can feel its the grip of the brass and the mahogany, and even the trigger. I think he would start uh, saying like a prayer, you know, to himself. Because I mean, with his reverent upbringing, I think that's what he would fall back on, especially in a very odd situation such as this. Mm-hmm. So, just yeah, just going through like the catechisms, kind of prayers, and the whatever litanies that they have. And what of Elisa? Um, so wherever she saw the last person that was of her party, mm-hmm. you know, she's gonna try to reach a hand out towards where that person was. You kind of reach out instinctively toward where Jonathan was, where you knew he had the map, and there's just this thin gauze, almost as if you're reaching into webs. And it's sticking to your arm like with static. You can feel your arm hairs raising up on end on the backs of your hand. <laughs> and then she's going to try to back out okay. towards where the entrance was to this room. You begin kind of moving backwards, trying to find the edge of the wall, trying to find the wall for that matter, for you see nothing but darkness. Jonathan? Um, the first thing I would do is just start speaking aloud, saying hello. Hello? Can I hear my own voice in this? You can feel your vocal cords moving, but you can't hear the sound of your voice. That is uh, incredibly panic-inducing. So I'm going to start like just flailing about and moving like rapidly forward, like feeling for anything I can find. What of yourself, Banneker? That sounds like a pretty good reaction. <laughs> Alright, I mean, I have... Do I, I... I still have my torch? I'm gonna be... I mean... I'm no, you, try hand, you handed me the torch. Oh, I'm just gonna be trying to find a wall or a way out. You're reaching toward the edge of where the wall would be to guide yourself out. And probably yelling, Boss? What, Warren? What? As you... You realize that you can see the, the vaulted edges of the, of the hallway above you, but as you look down... You're standing up on a floor that is not there, where waiting below thousands and thousands of feet below is this cascade of stars spread like some great galaxy. You're standing in the middle of space.
and then you begin to fall. As your arms and legs kind of pull up around, you can feel the wind whipping at you as your body is literally you're falling as if you're falling forever. Banneker? Oh, sorry. Uh, my apologies. Uh, Terwin? Pull my arm back. You draw your arm back, and you can see a hallway behind you where the lights begins to begins to illuminate the vases in front of you, and then behind you, the vases begin to appear as well as the darkness is gone. It's just you. You look toward your hand and your vase, and the torch is not there. This is not good. Well, I'm all alone, and it's it's been lit up. That's like both sides. Well, that's the thing is you're not really sure which side, which way you were going. It's almost like both are a mirror image of one another. And as you turn, the the image, the mirrored image, turns with your vision. Like it's all uniform, both directions you look. Okay, so I'm gonna. Um... Uh, just start walking forward. Okay. I mean, like, because essentially what I'm what I'm seeing is a hallway, both ways. Right. As you begin walking, you can hear footsteps behind you. You turn around, but there's nobody there. I will uh, take my sword, and uh, you hear this rushing from behind you. I'll uh, hold it up so I can see behind me okay. in the in the. the blade of the sword. You turn back, kind of reflecting in the, the edge of the sword. Roll a challenging scrutinized test. I'm going to grade this. It's going to be 31. Flip to succeed. Oh, cool. It's clever. Uh, at 38, still won't do it. Mm. It's dark. Strange. You look and you can't see anything. I will keep walking forward. Okay. A pair of boots kind of falling at the same rhythm which you're walking echoes behind you as you're walking and you can hear it growing more and more distant. And then we come to Warren. Or not Warren. You were standing above the great city of Durendal. But you're not born in the air looking down. Instead, you're upside down looking toward the ground. You can see the great spires of the city rising toward you, almost reaching out like great fangs, where your feet are dangled toward the moon and the stars are beneath your feet. But the world is in front of you below. You can feel your hair hanging down, your arms dangling down as well. This situation is not just mirrored in the way that Warren is positioned, but also in time. He remembers seeing this exact scene in deep down in the well, except now he's looking in the opposite opposite direction. I'm going to try to look down into the city to see if I can find Warren. Okay. You look down into the city, and it's almost like if you're looking through a piece of glazed blue glass. Like, the city is hard to see, like you're behind some something is in front of you it's hard to see you realize that you're not simply just over the city but you're looking with your own vision from beyond the stars into Durendal. you don't see warren but what you can see are two points in the city okay the first is the palace the palace of the baroness inhabits the second is a ruined foundry burning and on fire and you could see a man who was burnt to a crisp crawling out of the darkness, crawling out of the fire, crawling out of the flames. He is surrounded by people covered in soot. They've dropped their hammers and aprons. They are carrying him. His body is so broken. Miraculously, he has somehow survived. Okay, I'll keep, I'll keep watching. For a moment, you are not really sure where you're at. You're not even sure if you're alone, if it's a dream. All of you need to make challenging resolve tests to see if you can steal yourself against fear. Challenge. 
Ooh, Since I'm possessed, I have a seal of fortitude, so I always succeed. I'll fail. Nice. What we're rolling here? I would like to reroll this. Challenging resolve. I'll Challenging try. resolve. 62. 52% chance. Uh, success. success. Okay. <coughs> 44, critical success. Nice. <coughs> I'm going to restore that fortune point. Oh, nice. Mm. Who failed? I did. Ugh. I did. Yay, team failed. Those who failed gain six corruption. Yeah, Hell yeah. Did. Oh, God. 17 mental peril. All right. Oh, whoops. Collateral. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm good. Pardon me, Demon, going through. Oh. Just for one. <laughs> I'll, I'll be imperiled. That's right, you got a pervious mind, right? I do have I'm going to go down two, 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 four skill, one skill rank. So, uh, <coughs> I am only imperiled. Meryl. 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 You step through the darkness, and you all pause, bewildered for a moment, looking at one another, looking back toward the hallway you came from, where the tall, Pause is lying the, 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 lying the entire uh, chamber, lying the hallway, and look toward one another, and the field of blackness is gone. You feel very cold. What was that? Um, As you speak, you can see your breath in front of you. Uh, let's get the fuck out of here. Elisa doesn't say a word, she just starts heading back down the, the hallway that you came From. For a moment I was alone. You're turning around? Mm-hmm. For a moment I was alone in the hallway. The hallway was a lit. <laughs> Where's she going? No. No. No? No. 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 She just keeps walking. No. Like back the way we came? Yeah. Elisa, you'll be more in danger if you go that way alone than if you come with us. She stops for a moment. And then she turns around. I... I don't think that's true. <laughs> Not right at this moment, I don't. What was that? Where did you go? I went nowhere. It was a lot of you that disappeared. I kept walking down the hallway. Harper's teeth are chattering. I heard, I heard a lot of you leave... Uh, Walking the, the other way as I was walking forward. There was nothing there. It was nothing. How long were we gone? Harper puts away his gun. Who's to say? No, I don't have. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, but it just, it just seemed as a few moments, a vision. I'd just rather not be here. So it's right. forward or back. So you. You say you've had a vision, and you say there was nothing. There was nothing. It was, it was nothing. I was All of you disappeared. Everything was gone. There was no sound, no no sight, no anything. Yeah. How could, how could all of us disappear from all of us? You know, like, I was alone in this hallway for a bit. It's the reason were... I don't feel the need to go forward. Two words. Fucking Lornax. <laughs> I'm putting this gun away because it ain't gonna matter here. Conjuring tricks, eh? Uh-oh. I don't, I don't know. I was falling, so I'm falling. not falling anymore. So let's go. You, were you free falling? Uh, I was, unfortunately. What happened to you, Jonathan? I don't want to talk about it. Fair enough. You want to talk about your vision? wasn't the first time I saw a vision. Uh-huh. It was a mirror of the last. But... Like before, where you were staring down on the hole. Yes, but I looked in a different place. I saw... a stranger leaving a foundry, carried away by several men. And then it was gone. He must. It must have some sort of significance. What, like Saul Peterman sort of boundary? I can't say. It, it was just, just a few moments. Hmm. Well, it's over now. 
you believe it was an all night trick in order to keep people from passing through? I don't know what it was. You feel something pass over you in the in the in the chamber immediately, like something just kind of washes over you. This coldness, this otherworldliness. Let's and go. You shudder. Let's, it's either forward or back, boss. Forward. We're talking. Right. I agree. I'm ready to hustle. The deeper you move into the place, the colder that you get as you go through this winding set of halls until you come to this iron gate that is covered in hoarfrost. A gate is affixed with a door. Looking at your map, this must be the burial chamber. The entire gate is literally covered in frost. Not ice, but frost. It's so cold here. Oh, man. Go away from the light. Lisa huddles down into her cloak that she bought, thinking that she did. You reach down, and the use of these picks require delicate action, so you must move your gloves. Whereas the glocks before were challenging, this one is hard. You see your finger, your fingers are growing numb as you're kind of picking into the lock as she's down up on one knee. You're looking through the gates and you can just see darkness. The, the light does reach through in places and cast those long shadows of the bars through it in this vaulted tunnel. Hold that torch near your hands. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to do something while she's doing that, but I don't want to okay. interrupt let her. Let her yeah. roll first here. No. Okay. Um, roll one, do you, do you want to re-roll? Yeah. Okay, I'll take a misfortune point. I'm not gonna do. I rolled one. Le- I rolled 87, then 86. Roll one d6. Let's see how many Going minutes in the this right takes. Direction. At least it wasn't 88. Two. Tink! You feel one of the uh, lock picks break. You gonna continue trying? Yes. Uh, one set. Hold on. Pause for a minute. What were you gonna do? All right. Turn Good. Everyone, just hope, keep your keep your wits about you. We've seen worse. We have. We've been through worse. We made it through it. We'll get through this. Just hold it together. Remember to trust in each other. Because I'm going to attempt to try Real leadership and test. hold them together. <laughs> What's your current damage condition track? Uh, lightly wounded. Okay. Uh, your chance will be standard. Standard leadership will be a 58. And a 24 will succeed. Nice. Um, everyone moves one step up the peril condition track. I'm gonna, with him doing that, I'm, I'm gonna pair off of uh, Jonathan's idea. I'm gonna like, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna take the torch, I'm gonna put it where the lock set is mm-hmm. underneath the bars and warm the lock up for her. Yeah. So she's gonna take a minute after the lock pick breaks and kind of warm her hands up and then try to take her time. I'm gonna literally Same. warm the lock okay. with the, the torch and see if that helps. So you're gonna take your time? Yes. Okay. It's gonna request to extend your time by three, but your chance will now be challenging. <laughs> nope. Roll three D six. No, that's a critical fail. Roll three D six. One, two, four. So it's a tunnel, Pally? Uh one, two, four, so seven. seven. Okay. You break a lock pick once again and you give up. Uh, or I say you don't give up, my apologies. You you, you uh, suffer peril due to anxiety. It says eight mental peril. Impervious mind. Oh, well, you wouldn't have hit my threshold anyway. So. Well, I mean, you can't continue trying. <laughs> you got that extra set. I, well, the block picks aren't destroyed. I'm just, just it took her a really long time, and she not only failed, she got geared muttering, damn it, damn it, she's getting frustrated. That's the peril would be from frustration, anxiety. Oh, if we is it completely frozen through? Like it is not. No, he like has the... heated. He has heated up. It's just difficult. It's okay, just cold. Just breaking the fight. You've got this. You can do it. I believe in you. That somebody does right at this moment. Always have. Always will. Okay, it's a challenging test. Taking your time. Yes. Hey, not sex will do it. Tink! <laughs> <laughs> the gate... It 
it's frozen in place, but as you push it, it breaks some of the hoar frost off. As it was just like if you if you imagine like when you walk into like a utility freezer in like a restaurant where you have like the perpetual ice on everything, that's what it's like. The ice just shatters and breaks as you push the door open. It's so so cold in here. The air is hazy. I don't think we should go any further. Yeah. It's supernatural this cold. Think about it, what could be causing this? I, I know that if you go further into the earth, it becomes colder, but not this quickly. It's winter. This quickly. We have not descended that much. Not this far. No. Th this okay. is not the way it works. All right, well, which way are we gonna go? She's gonna take a second and look around and see. You look down toward the map and you realize not far from here is the burial chamber, and no more than just a few yards beyond these gates where it fans out into a number of alcoves where you can, where it looks like basically in the map looks like a chamber with these kind of smaller wings off the side of it. You're about to enter into a very large chamber. As you shine your light down the hallway, you can see this huge set of iron doors that are shut, but they are not covered with more frost. Does that appear to be the correct way? Like in my head, am I... Yeah, you're looking at you, you and Jonathan are right. looking at the map, and you're kind of and you've got the intuition, of course. You know you need to go toward where the light, where the where there is no light, right? This is clearly that way. Yeah, the way Josephine Booker had indicated. Sorry, she may have left some things out of that. Look at the look at that one over there. Fuck your friend. It doesn't have any old frost on it. Well, my friend. <laughs> Remember, he's the second. Fuck number one. <laughs> Uh, let's just go. Let's see, boss. If you, if you, this is this is the way. Let's let's go. Let's, it's, let's it's not. not frozen over, no. But what caused right here to be? Well, whatever's right here, I want to get away from. Lead the no. way, Phyllis. If there if there is another way, we'll take it. Is there another way? There's not. Not that I can see. All right, Jonathan. Jonathan looking at the map. So I can go. Then why let's are we look. still discussing something that's already been decided? All right. Yeah. Let's do it. I will carry on. You come toward the door. And it says, in ancient all above it, here is the empire of the dead. It is dated 567, second age. Can I read ancient all? Somebody can. I can. <laughs> you might have education can. Pretty, pretty much half the table. More than half the day. We're just dumb soldiers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright. So is this, uh, is this iron gate locked as well? No. It looks very, very old. It's like banded iron across the wood. Um, it's not decorative by any means, a very utilitarian, but um, it looks it looks really, really old, like something that was built in a at a time well before even your grandfather. It has that look of like antiquity, but a long antiquity that perhaps none of you would know about, save for those who have education and have read of such things. It just has a look of something of un, un, that that may have been done by your forefathers, your ancestors. This place is so good as shit. Yeah. Not sure what you were expecting. Oh no, that's not disappointment. It's just... It just came to me. So I would love to look at the antiquities. Why don't we just continue? I'd rather be out of there. Right. We are looking at them. But yes. Carry on then. This is so deep. I don't understand why they would have... There must have been another entrance that was sealed off a long time ago. The Lord Knights dug too deep. <laughs> and too greedily. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the 21st Hall or whatever. The doors, for a moment, barely budge. But perhaps in his own anxiety, Har Harper leads us out of the doors. The doors are simply kind of groaning. As it scrapes across the floor, mm. and then there's just this large, resplendent 
hall. A chamber, a burial chamber of sort. And you can see that there are these really old inlays set into the wall, painted, uh, that seem to show figures in alarming detail. Uh, despite its age, almost if you're looking up on the hieroglyphs, but looking up on ancient, old ancient Christian paintings on the walls, uh, depictions that you recognize as stories from the the Holy Libram, um, but well preserved despite the age. And within this chamber that spans into two great wings, there are these kind of narrow uh, insets where there are the the, the bones and the robes uh, of Elorinites who have been buried here. And beneath each there's an epitaph. And each epitaph reads differently, indicating both the number of years that they lived, their name, the number of years that they lived, and something important about their lives. Bloody wizard burial ground. All right, never thought I'd see one. And, uh, yeah, I will, I will continue to press on, as I have a, I myself am nervous, but I have a group of people who are even more nervous with me. The curiosity is going to get the better of me. There's no way I'm not reading these. Yay! <laughs> Harper's just making, I'll like, try to do it as quickly the cross as I can, symbol, you know? I can't help it. Whatever the... That's right. I have to seven read these. No one's yeah, ever, the no one's been going to read these in a long time. Nine point star. I have a feeling. And you once were of this order. Yeah. There are more important things than uh, the cut of one's cloth. Essentially, this... I will read one of the epitaphs that is that is closest to you. And it it reads... Um, Lorm Ipsen Delor Sid Amet Conesta Kutir Ata Elite. Something apti dabius diem set nizi nusquis safe. It's in a language you don't understand. It's written in a very strange language, for that matter. It it feels like it is written in ancient old, but there are these vowels you can't quite make out, Jonathan. <laughs> I got some. I got some of the Latin. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's not it. Well, guess who has uh, <laughs> secret signs and is good at reading like... Hey, uh, guess who also <laughs> yeah. secret, secret. Let's try it. Okay. Well, the two I, of you sit standing there are kind I'm of like, they're it. clearly enamored with this. Like, yeah. Jonathan kind of urges um, Elisa over, and Elisa is, of course, taken in too. Uh, both of you uh, may make Damn, either... You, can may make, you may make either arduous folklore tests... Or trivial incantation tests. Why don't y'all take a picture of the last one? Yeah. Wait. Flip to fail on incantation. You said arduous folklore, or what was the incantation? Trivial incantation. You can't try that unless it's trained, though, right? No, you absolutely can't. You just flip to fail. Flip to fail. As a star, you always flip to fail unless you have a rank in it. You know what? I'm going incantation. Yeah, you are. Because I have an 86% chance of the incantation. Let's roll an 11. <laughs> 68 or 86. Did you succeed? Exactly, on the die. What about yourself, Jonathan? I'll try with the uh, folklore test. Oh. You said it was uh, arduous? It is arduous folklore or trivial incantation. I have a 35% chance to succeed on that. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Red dice. First. Uh, critical success. Yeah! Critical success. Yeah. Yeah. Critical success. To, wow! <laughs> <laughs> to Elisa, this is clearly... This is some sort of convocation. It is clearly some sort of ritual they have authored on the wall. Because you clearly succeeded, you now know how to use the ritual blessed sacrament. Oh my. Whoa, and this is going to start us down a really dangerous path. What could go wrong? But it's blessed. So you have get so now you may use the ritual blessed sacrament as on page 353 of the player's handbook. Down that path, that left hand side. Oh boy, I have to look this up. But yeah, 
Wow. Viewers who used to be the last <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was going to happen eventually. <laughs> Actually, if you look at the bottom Scary bar, dude. it would be the left hand side. This Ooh. is... Some kind of magic's written on this wall. Oh, yes. Wait, what now? He grabs the torch as the two of them are standing toward it, and they're just kind of taking it in. And it's inscribed on this huge epitaph written on the wall. He's grabbing my torch. <laughs> well, Elisa does have the lantern. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The so the lantern's better. They sit the lantern down and open it up, and they're both kind of talking to one another, reading through, and they're kind of coming to this realization that they're looking at some sort of magic spell written on the wall. I wonder if this is what the uh, Inquisitor's looking for. What's your name? Well, the Inquisitor is in this area, right? Supposedly, we're below what you call it, right? Or at least on our way to the being gate. below there. Well, they're inquiring in their own place. They need to go below. Yeah. I assume there's quite a few things they're probably looking for. If you, they want heretical things. This is definitely up there, though. Would it be heretical? Or is it... Part of the lead room. What'd you call it? What? What the thing written on the wall? Yeah, it's some kind of magic blessing, something. Okay, now magic or blessing? Well, I mean, the term blessing doesn't necessarily mean religious in aspect. What? It I just think... means something good. I guess that depends highly upon the. Uh, I don't know about that, but okay. highly upon okay. the. Uh, the eye of that beholder. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what you invoke to bring this blessing. <laughs> yeah. so it's a blessing, it just depends on the god now. Well, I mean, I can. I don't know what it does exactly. I can do this. What? What? You can do magic. I. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I think I understand this. I think I. I. It's a theorem written on a wall. How would you understand it? Okay, well, wait. First off, this is how they all are. You think you understand it? What is it? It's, it's an incantation. It's a. It's yes, a, it. What is it? It's a consecration. What is the uh, the god that's being invoked in the uh, on the wall? What is it there? Who they're referring to? Eloran, the keeper of the dead. Oh but they speak about Eloran in the first person, oh my god. not the learner, but Eloran himself. The first, the first of the learner's priests. It is, uh, it is the origin. It is, it is the consecration of the dead. I mean, what would you expect from the law and I? Burial, right? No, I thought that would be the, the martyr. Okay, I so it's, a, it's yeah. a blessing of the learner. Well, I mean, the actual learner no. himself isn't that bad a guy. It's his uh, people who were trying to. Right, it's the followers that are the assholes. Disciples. This is something yeah. special. Yeah, those guys. So, uh, Jonathan, you actually think that you could, what, quote this and make it happen? I do. Okay, so... I've been, I've huh? been studying this for years and years and years, and I don't know, this was... But you just saw it today. No, not this. He saw not this, this, this idea. Okay, I'd like the idea. I'd the like entire reason why I'm here in the first place. All of that. Well, this was your destiny to find this writing on this wall. I don't believe in destiny. It seems I very superstitious. Okay, wait, wait, wait. To find writing on I have acquired this via very studious effort for years and years. Yeah, let's let him finish. I don't know. The consecration ritual has been done for years. It protects homes from the abyssal and it sends dead on their way according to the beliefs of whoever travels that way. It, it purifies that which is tainted but not by like an earthly rot. Does that make sense? Yeah, like bad, uh, bad spirits and all that. Really? So you can purify the heresy dead. Uh, I suppose so. I don't know that it was necessarily heresy, per se. That was quite a, a tongue twister there. But simply to keep out something that does not belong in 
the existence you are currently in. I don't know how to describe it any better than that. Simply so, something that does not belong there. It keeps away things from coming to your home that should not be there. Yeah, yeah. Like Warren, the, like Warren the gets a really worried look on his face and then takes off running out. What? Which direction? The way, like, the way we were headed. What? Uh, well, there's a, unfortunately, there's a door there. He's going to try to make his way through the door. I will uh, attempt to stop him. Sure. Grabs you from behind the door. Could this grabbing you by both shoulders. Could this stop the shadow thing? Right. What's stop. wrong? What the? What, what is he? Hold on. What's, what's wrong? Shakes his head. Let me go. Let me go. Alright. If we need to leave, let's leave. I don't want you running off by yourself. You're important. You do not... You are not home. She'll say directly to you. This isn't Dorindle. Are you at home? This isn't Dorindle. That's not the home I mean. I think we're all be getting a bit stressed out on a no, tight me, environment. Give me a moment. I'll hold the uh, the torch up and try to look into his eyes, see if I see a reflection. So no, using no, all of no. my occult knowledge that I have to see <laughs> if I can determine like that he has been possessed or managed by something. something. You you draw the uh, you draw the. Uh, <laughs> The torch toward his eyes, and he recoils from the brightness, and you realize his eyes are completely dilated. They're dilated blue. That is not his eye color. What color are your eyes normally? Green? Uh, if you say blue, I'm we'll laugh a little bit. Uh, it was brown. Brown. Go oh, brown. Black. Gray. I, think it was... I have gray. Dark green. Dark green, wow. yeah. His eyes are kind of an icy blue. White Walker. White Walker. <laughs> <laughs> they don't shine. They're just. I know. It's only blue eyes. <laughs> I'm not angry at you. Try. He tries to say in a calming voice, but you are. You are not Warren, are you? I shouldn't. You covet the esoteric of Rendell. I do. I covet it too. Only one of us can have it. Why? Forbidden knowledge must be destroyed. No. That's not right. That is not the way. Warren redoubles his efforts to try to get him away. It backed you against the wall. Hold him tight. Pull <laughs> out my lasso. Who are you? Don't run, Warren. What is your name? I will not be cowed by your interrogations. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not doing this. No, I won't have any of this happening to Warren. And I won't have you talking about destroying things either. The name still sounds queer. It sounds like it's not your name, but they keep telling you that it is. He looks at him like sort of puzzled, like, did you not just see what happened? Like, He's not Warren. That's not Warren. He's I'm really confused to as to like... I, I understand. I'm not having that this happen to Warren when he gets back. Listen. We need to get through this. Down here is not the place for this. Neither you nor I have the book. We will agree to a until we find our way away from a place that we are not trespassing. Hopefully you two can talk it out. Can you agree to that? I'll agree to that for now. Times have been given. Times have been granted. What a way to last. Let's proceed. 
If we're not doing anything, could we continue? I would like to get out of here. Yeah, same here. What exactly qualifies as something? <laughs> if that, if <laughs> in fact that does not qualify as doing anything. The something is that you have decided to do a truce, so at this time there will be no action. Could we continue as well? Something, I'm something wizardry. Ah, I'm something, surrounded something. by dullards. Get the fuck out of here. Alright. Warren is backed into a corner looking like he looked like a trapped animal. His eyes are wide and his hands are going to put out in an aggressive manner. Between him and a lot of you is Jonathan who is kind of pleading with you with his hands outward. Whatever, do what you want. Let's get the hell out of here. That's my fault. Yes. Are you the yes. I'm perfectly capable of handling myself. Handle yourself at a distance from me if you would be so kind. Alright, mate. Just let me know. Warren kind of steps out of a, an aggressive posture and moves to a defensive posture, straightening his clothes and affixing the regalia he is wearing, resplendent as he is <laughs> from head to toe. He's no longer kind of hunkered over like a cornered animal, but now he's kind of standing up, his fists kind of balled up. You can see the whites of his knuckles as he is not, as he's still fairly tense. And you can still feel the coldness in here, but it is not as strong, I guess you could say. You cannot see your breath in here, but it is cold as if you're beneath ground. Wouldn't that nothing happen to you, Warren? Wouldn't that nothing happen to you either, Jonathan? He just rolls his eyes and turns away. All right. Yeah. Is there anything else we need to be doing here? Do I need to ask question. Hmm? How close are we getting out of here? Not map. Is that a, is that an easy enough question, or is that more dullery? <laughs> because yeah, I, I know how to be high and mighty, but. God damn it, get us out of here. Look, saying nothing, he'll look down at the map. I'm sorry that, uh, you know, the revelation that a possessed demon was among you wasn't enough to keep your limited interest. Wait. But I'm certain we'll find something to discuss later. Wait, I, I've been trying to tell all of you this for weeks now, and no one will listen to me. So, this is no weeks. enlightenment to me. The things that we find, uh, the thing that we find acceptable are, I guess, that we become numb to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you looked around? Demon? <laughs> Have you looked around? Get us out of here, then fix the situation. Alright. I mean, let's go back to the Let's go back to here and pull the beast out. And he just looks at him, like, without saying anything. Oh! Is that after. What? I've only done this once before. No, we'll do that. We'll do that later. <laughs> Must bring your own weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Safety not guaranteed. Safety very not. Harper, all of this yeah. is, I believe, both you and Elisa were struck with fear earlier. It's kind of getting to the both of you. You can right. feel it's not just the the irritation, but the anxiety and in, in, in begins mm. to build. And you can both feel your hearts racing at all of this, unsure what to do. Let me just ask you one thing. But just let us get out of this goddamn place, cheat, martyr, and mother, and all this. <laughs> martyr, steward, and murder, murder. murder. <laughs> does, it, does it have to be done here? Could it kind of been, be done later? It doesn't have to be done here. Okay, that's good. Let's move on. Hey, eh? yes, this idiot would like to get out of here. Yes. So we push forward. I'll take the lead. I'm tired of waiting. Hmm. Harper will not take the lead. He is suffering from fear. Right. <laughs> to, be cl- to be clear, <laughs> to be clear, you suffered peril, but you were both suffering from fear. So remember that. <clears throat> All right. Well, then I'll just lean on my chaos manipulation, which is uh, melancholy, not do anything. <laughs> Makes sense. What is your chaos benefit? What's your chaos? Um, Right. Incompetence. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fine, you fuckers do whatever you want. We want to die down here, we'll die down here. I don't give a fuck no more. I we, just said, let's go. Whatever. Whatever. Look, at least it's kind of rotating the map I, around. <laughs> you 
know what? Just somebody take this. And she hands the compass to whoever's closest. I... I just, just somebody get us out of here if we she could. thrust it into Banneker's hands, I, along I, with the map. Uh, um, I'm still going as a dolan here. I'm just gonna hand it all back to Charlie. I, I'm pretty sure it's that way, but I just can. I. You feel really turned around, Elisa, in here because the chamber is kind of the same on both sides with the doors as well, no. and you don't. Remember closing the doors you came in, but it's clearly closed. Why? Why? She looks through at both sets of doors, so they're both closed. You all, yeah. She, she you kind of see what's ha- you see her kind of confused for a moment. And you kind of look as well, and all of you, and you realize that the doors are closed on either side. Who closed those? Oh, but. But. I was looking at the writing. Who who closed those? No, but seriously, who closed those? We were supposed to close them afterwards and put the you know bit of paper or whatever. And so you closed it. Not not the gates, but the doors that led into here that you came through. It was like it was not iron gates. They were the double not doors. The lock. Yeah, those double doors were closed on either okay. side. No, but who did? And you know you came from that set, or at least you think you did, Elisa. Jonathan, you have a good semblance of where you came from, as is the rest of you. What difference does it make? Let's move forward. There's a gleam in Warren's eye. Lisa just picks up the lantern, kind of hugs her cloak closer to her. Just go where we're going to go. Danica. I will grab one of the guns that's been broken and start cleaning it or okay. fixing it while these guys sit here and talk for hours. He's it, just gonna fix them. Yeah, it's see, it, the good thing is it's kind of keeping you in like in one right, exactly. mode to like focus on something almost like zen like, uh-huh. where you can kind of do something that's very mechanical and rote to kind of keep right. yourself focused and calm. I guess you could say. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna start doing. Banica. Yeah, yeah, boss. Would you be a gentleman and and uh, keep watch on the backside? In case someone did close this door behind us and we shall carry forth. Yeah, yeah, boss. Who has the uh, compass? I gave him the map and the compass. So, Jonathan. Jonathan, the compass is not working. You move one direction of points east, you move the other direction of points south. This doesn't make any sense. And you return back south once again, but then it turns west. There's some sort of magnetic field in here or something that something is throwing the compass off. It's not working. Sure! Well, we came from that way. There's only doors that way. So it's a... It's not like a 50-50 shot. It's a 100% shot that way. No, I agree. But something is definitely a miss in here if that wasn't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not... I... I... Go out the direction that Banneker pointed, and I carry on. Coincidentally, on the other wall is another epitaph. That is unlike the one you saw before. As you turn toward the doors. Uh, Before that happens, though, let's see if Banneker was right. Roll a navigation test. This test will be routine for you. I love that you said everybody knew which way we came from. After you came into here, things got a little strange. Okay, well, then I wouldn't have made that snap judgment, but alright. Navigation. Flip the fell, right? It's a, it's a secret test. Oh, sorry, it's a routine test. My apologies. Routine on your navigation. navigation. Okay, so that's a 68. And I got a 50, so flip to fail. So 50? 50. So success. Success, yes. Okay. You come to the doors, and that's when Jonathan, both you and Elisa notice there's actually another epitaph written on the opposite wall. And it appears to be the one you'd seen before, but it's written backwards. I don't get it. Well, it's, so it, um, is it the opposite of whatever you learned? I mean, it's backwards, right? So it's like... A lower night tricks. Right. Hey, no mind. <laughs> is able. <laughs> is there anything in uh, the religious or occult studies that would indicate like backwards writing as something of a of spell or ward or anything like that? Well, there are there are 
there are three specific paths that you know toward what is simply called the greater, the higher mysteries. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, among the higher mysteries of those two, there are there is one path that those who follow Eloran know, and then there is another path that the, the left-handed path that is often avoided. It is the path that is that is spoken of in certain circles that uh, that uh, Elorinites who have gone mad have followed, <clears throat> such as Professor Hostorf of um, of Durindal. Certainly, like a mirror in a lake, like a reflection. That's right. There is the the path of God. There is the path of the other. The path of the unknown, I should say. It is a yeah. it is a an edge that the Elorinites skirt along as they continue their studies into these sort of occultish understand these occultish path understandings or teachings. Um, it is a path that has only been walked by a few, but those who have followed that path have met their inevitable doom. Promises of power um, have lured some toward it, though. Does it feel like this epitaph is written upon the other door? No, it is not. It is simply written on the opposite side, the other wall, right. opposite the one you are facing. It is nowhere near the doors. I appreciate the need for haste, so we won't dwell on this, but let's move on. No, no, no. Uh, the door is open. K Clunk. And then you could feel this coldness kind of wash over you as the door is open. And as you step out into the hallway once again, the warmth of the crypt and chamber behind you leaves. You can once again feel the hackles rise at the back of your neck. You begin to shiver as you can see your breath in front of you, as if you're walking through a freezer. The tunnels are tight, very tight, where you're almost walking one by one by one. The vaulted ceiling grows a little lower. Does it say something on this side of the door? No. Well, there's nothing there. No, I'm at the back. No, that's so a great, great question, but you yeah. know you're definitely at the right door because there's yeah. nothing written there. Like, Where are you? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what? <laughs> but there's nothing written there. But you can feel this yawning Wonderful. darkness. Nothing on this door. Army of the dead, or whatever, sent on the other side. Good. We just may see the. We just may see the. Uh, Oh man's gates after all. Moon, sun. Stars. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Yes. Jonathan, you pause for a moment as you realize the compass is not working, and then you, looking at the map, you recognize that this path is not on the map. Not supposed to be a door here. Son of a... Okay, so what do you recommend we do? I'll try to orient my position based on where we came in the room and exited to see where on the map it's not. You're, <clears throat> both you and Elisa, of course, because she has she can assist. Both you have secret signs. That you would guess that this map is either in error or perhaps something spilled upon it. Um, maybe blood and the melee and the fracas when you lay the Tomb Raiders to to their to, their, to rest. With your swords and bows, um, but um, something is spilled across the, the map, the, and and you're gonna smudge it and pour some water and try to get it off, but you realize it's been stained, and you have a good feeling that if you go, if you continue down this path and then twist into these what looks like winding tunnels that are kind of off on the side of the of the goat of the goatskin map, that must be where you need to go. That that will lead you to the sepulchre. Which is your last kind of waypoint until you can find your way above the city. It's not exactly the way that has been marked, at least not as we can read it, but if we're careful, it'll take us where we need to go. Yes. There's no other way to the sepulchre that we can see on the map? Uh, there is another path, yes, but it looks winding and twisting. It would take you to double back deeper into other, other chambers that are not marked at all. Presenting that option, I assume that that would not be the preference. 
among the uh, we can press forward and try to put together the missing piece of the map ourselves this way or we can double back and take twice the time and go back through places that obviously have caused us a great deal of stress and anxiety what do you recommend I recommend we move forward we do not know if stress and anxiety or rest this way, but we certainly do that it rests back the way we can. Then we go forward. And with that, following Jonathan and Elisa's lead, you head deeper in within the tunnels. Your torch snuffs out. An hour passes. You can... How many long how long have we done there? I'll light another one. You're wandering through these twisting, vaulted tunnels of varying widths and heights, but all seem to be laying with the skulls and bones of the dead, laying almost haphazardly, as if a, as if thousands of souls were taken in some great unknown war. No epitaphs were laid before them, no flowers laying at the foot of the grave, bones simply instilled, instilled within this strange ossuary that uh, the bones almost litter everywhere, the floors, within the insets of the walls, and this pervasive sense of coldness kind of passes over you as you can see your breath. And at some point during this, there is this strange sound. You can't quite place what it is, but it's almost like a faint echo. Like kind of where you're in the, the, the right where you're on the edge of sleep and awake, where you haven't quite put together what's real and what's not. You may still be in an REM dream state. Like the sounds and the shapes you can't quite make out. It's almost like you're getting this this constant sense of deja vu. It's very unnerving. Because it doesn't leave. Like, you're not only do you feel like you've been here before, you feel like you've done this many times before. Is that map of yours? I'm sure, it's right. It. No. The, uh, the whole. The tunnels seem to terminate. Not at some grand set of doors, but they terminate in a rough cavern that's wet and muddy. And at the far end of the cavern, affixed into the stone between these stalactites and stalagmites, is this very simple wooden door. About 15 yards out. And the way the stalagmites and stalactites are raising, there cast shadows everywhere. And as your light moves between them, the shadows move with where your light goes, as you have many sources of light around here, but does little to illuminate this cavern that you're in. You pause for a moment, and you hold the light steady, and that's when you can see the shadows are moving on their own. They're shifting this way and that despite the fact your light is affixed in one place. The shadows have a life of their own. Let's get that door open. Are they locked? You begin to approach the door, and the shadows seem to spill forth from the darkness. You kind of all stop for a moment as they kind of spill between the stalagmites and stalactites, forming this strange black inky curtain that covers both the door and the wall where your light does not pass through. I'll try and chase away the shadows with the tor- with the lantern I'm carrying. Okay. You take one step forward and then another and then another and I get to roll on the shift. Oh boy! <clears throat> it's... I... I it's 10, so... We're finishing at 10.30. Okay. Sorry, listeners. Grab your drinks. You broke your, uh... You broke kayfabe. I did. 
third wall, fourth hey, wall, fifth wall, a fifth column built. No, there's enough fantasy references out there. Uh, seventh player. Yeah. The seventh guest. Advanced player's wall. Jonathan, what's your perception bonus? Seven. Roll off. I got two. I got a six. Elisa has an 18 as well. Oh, it goes after Elisa. Banneker, the shadow awaits. It stands before you. You can, you can see that it is reaching not through the air, but its tendrils seem to come down the walls itself and seem to be kind of dropped down the ground. These long hands are kind of stretching across the cavern floor, and they're completely flat. Two dimensions, black, just black as it's impenetrable by light. It's reaching across the floor. I'm going to use my torch as a weapon to try and okay. knock it away. All right. So you will need to engage, uh, which it is three yards away. Okay. So you to hustle up there. So you step forward, and you've got your light, and you thrust out toward it. Uh, make a make a standard attack or a, sta a standard test standard for melee test. attack. Simple melee, right? Yes. Okay. I say 65, and that is a 28. So I don't know if I hit or not, but I okay. hit. You hit. So what you'll do is you will roll, uh, add your perception bonus okay. to 1d6 Fury Die. And that's how much damage it will do. My perception is a 7. And an 11. Okay. You... Swing your torch toward it and try to immolate the thing. And as the torch reaches into the darkness, you can see this kind of fizzling, almost like oil bubbling toward the darkness. And the hand kind of draws back. What do you want to do now? You have one action point left. I will do the same. Okay. So your next test will be challenging. Okay. Still 65. And I rolled a 40. Or no, it would be a 55, so I rolled a 40. Okay, roll damage again. So perception bonus plus Seven. 1d6 here. 12. 12, nice. You push, you push toward it once again, and the shadow kind of withdraws once again. Jonathan, what will you do? I go again, actually. Oh, that's right. You're at the beginning of the turn. Okay. <laughs> what will you do now, Banneker? I will three more times. <laughs> okay, so your first attack is standard. 65. That does not hit. Okay, roll again. It's challenging. 42 does hit. Okay. Uh, ooh, that's not. Uh, nine. Nice. Okay, roll again. This is hard. And. Hard? Yeah. I missed. Okay. Banneker is standing in the shadows, swinging toward it, lunging toward the shadows. The shadow seems get to get a kind torch of, out of my bag. Seems to break apart at times as he's whatever like, it is. It fire it doesn't like fire. He's swinging toward it and doing what he can to get control of the situation, and that brings us to Jonathan. Jonathan, what will you do? Then I will follow his advice. I'm uncertain as to what to do. I'll fumble around to try to get a torch. From okay. And get it lit. Okay. So it's going to be three action points to get a torch. Draw, sorry, two action points to draw it and light it. To interact. All right. Do you have one? Do you have a torch, or are you taking one of mine? I'm taking one of yours. Okay. So that means you'll hustle up toward where Banneker is, um, and draw the torch out of his bag and get it lit. And that's the end of your turn. Elisa, right. what will you do? Pull the torch from her bag. Strike it. It's gonna be well lit in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I told you, light it if you got it. Light them if you got. <laughs> you have a torch already. You have a torch on you, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in my bag. Okay, so it's going to two action points to illuminate. And remember this, shadow is three yards away. Yeah, and so um, 
she's not gonna run up because she is still afraid at this point. Mm -hmm. So she will bank that last one, but hold on to the torch and hold it out as if if somebody else needs it. Okay. <sighs> okay, you've got it drawn. Choke the shadow. She's... You wanna stay where you're at? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, that brings us to whatever this thing is. So, where you are at specifically, where you are at um, <clears throat> Banneker, the shadow seems to almost peel off the wall and you can see it kind of shimmering and moving as it tries to envelop him with a ghostly touch. Gross. Yeah. A ghostly touch? A ghostly ch- touch is a 60% chance. That's sweet. <laughs> I strike. You do not suffer damage. Instead, you gain six corruption and suffer from fear. As you feel this strangeness and all around you, you gain or you suffer. My apologies. Uh, you suffer eight mental peril. Okay. At this point, and you have had a brush with death. You may mu- you must resist with a resolve test. It's standard. Standard. Uh, I did not succeed. Would you like to reroll that? Yes. Sure. <laughs> this point. Anything that sounds like that. Success. Okay. <gasps> You feel cold as you withdraw. Really? Yes. I, don't, I don't remember, because the <laughs> monsters I've been making are nowhere close to that. And then but. something reaches out once again toward Elisa. <laughs> There's, sounds it bad. is soundless in here, oh. save for your own scuffling and movement and panicked. <gasps> Someone fucking right. touch me! <laughs> Elisa, 60% chance to strike you. That's a nine. <clears throat> they hit. Can I attempt a dump? Unfortunately not, for its touch provokes fear as you gain six corruption and, uh, oh god, um, uh, 15 mental, sorry, 15 physical peril, my apologies. Physical peril? Physical peril. It's too old. And you must resist with a standard result, sorry, a routine result test. This is its second attack. Six, 14, 36, 68 will not do it. Okay. You so have I'm afraid s- times two. Re-roll. All right. I don't know what it does, but just I, I don't bad. know either. But yeah, let's, let's go ahead. The touch of death does not sound. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Forty-six will do it. Okay. <laughs> I kind of want to know. You I don't withdraw know once again. Bad, but I kind of want to know. And then for its <laughs> final attack toward. Banneker. <laughs> you feel its cold embrace. 40% chance to strike. 36 is a hit. Uh-huh. You suffer six more corruption. I think I'm going uh, to. You, uh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's just not that bad. Uh, you gain six mental peril. And you must resist with a. Routine resolve test. Routine resolve test. We all suffer a brush of death. That's even better. Good. Okay. (laughs) And then Elisa, it reaches back out toward you. Yay. It's starting to spend its uh, coin here. Makes sense. 30%. 30%. Nobody else has got anything lit, right? So. 85. I'll reroll that with a misfortune point. Yay. I got one lit. That's a hit. Yay. Six more. You gain six more corruption. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's you what? suffer. Oh god. I You rolled 22 physical peril? Mm. 22. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ignore three skill ranks. <laughs> You just call this like you feel your 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 whole body is arrested, frigid, frozen in terror. Imagine like when you're in a dream, you can't run away, like you're just kind of frozen in terror. You feel that all around you, and you must succeed a routine resolve test. Ninety won't do it. Oh no! I mean, I could use another coin, but that's you could, but he could, and you could. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's your choice. We got four left. Screw it, let's see what happens. You have suffered a brush with death. You can see these gray streaks along one side of her braid as you lose 1% from Brawlin. <laughs> That's not good. Sounds like it aged you. Terrible, it's your turn. What will you do? That's really not good. Uh, I 1%, will. One percent. You said right from Braun. One percent from Braun permanently. Right. I will take my lantern and I will see if a lantern will do the trick on the. Uh, so you will, you will hustle up and then make a yeah. melee attack. Yes. Okay. You come up there and you swing your leg, oh, holding it before it as a melee weapon or ranged weapon. Uh, melee. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, simple melee attack. Okay. Uh, it's not as good as Marshall, but it still do something. Uh, difficulty standard. Yes. Standard. My apologies. Uh, fifteen. Oh, seven will succeed. Okay. You swing the lantern out violently. Roll one d six chaos die. Oil splashing everywhere. One. Okay. It is not. Uh, lit anymore. Fortunately, the light, the the oil didn't s splash everywhere, but the the lantern has has been winked out, um, and nothing happens at this point. Taron, you have one action point left. Uh... Think quick. He, yeah, he's gonna relight the lantern. So it's gonna cost two AP, so he'll continue into your next turn. Okay. Warren. Question mark? So, is this thing still in front of the door? The shadow is still there, yes. Okay. It seems to be being beaten back against the walls and slowly dissipating as Banneker laid into it with the torch. And as Terwin came forward with the light, it recoiled, but it did nothing. What? Well, I'm trying to say, can I make it to the door from where I'm standing? If you wish to pass through the shadow, I'll do it. Okay. Warren blindly rushes forward and it makes an opportunity attack. This is 80%. 54 will do it. I dodge. Uh, you have action points? Yeah, we got three. Sure! You can, it is a melee attack. Sorry, it has a melee attack. That's a parry. You can't yeah. melee or you can't defend against an opportunity attack. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, okay. You suffer from fear. <laughs> Six corruption. All right. Thus stoking the possession. He doesn't want the corruption. He's already uh, and you gain thirteen <laughs> mental peril. Okay. Make a routine resolve test. All right. I automatically succeed because I have stealing forge. Dude. Nice. That's right. You come toward the door. It's a very simple, plain wooden door. A small, like almost like a door to a house, affixed into this large stone cavernous wall. Can I open it. You don't have enough action points. I'll use them. What's that? I'll use them. Use them. What? Any action points we have left. Okay, so it's going to cost you, so you'll need to take one out of there. Okay. Okay. You open the door. But what does Warren see? Harper, it's your turn. Wait, I want to keep, I want to keep moving. Oh, you want to keep moving through? Yes. Okay, so you want to hustle inside? Mm -hmm. Okay, one more action point. Warren steps inside and you look toward the shadows and you feel this, the coldness is gone in here. There's a sense of calm beyond this door. There's no light. You can just see shapes hazy in the dark with your, with your dark sight. But this place is a small burial chamber. Okay. Very small, cramped, but the size of a small, with the floor of a, of a small cottage. Plainly adorned, but you can't make out any details because you have no light. All right. Well, I want to escape Jonathan and the group. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So, passing through the inside of this chamber, you come to a door, but that door clunk, 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 is shut. Ah. Okay. He steps into the darkness, and you hear the door open, and Warren is gone. Harper. Uh, Harper, uh, being a bit fearful, will uh, go ahead and just 
pull his gun and shoot at this thing until it stops clicking. Okay. Ah! He, yeah, exactly. That. Boom, boom, boom. He, fan, <laughs> he fans the trigger of the uh, of the flintlock. Your first strike is art. Unless you just don't care to hit your. Unless you want to just fire blindly into melee. Uh, I mean, it's a. Is it a, like? So you, this shadow is taking up multiple like yards. It's like this huge shadow, right? It is. It is engaged with them. It is over them. It is okay. around them. But it is not. It's not like attacking the broad side of the like car. The wall and stuff. So yeah, like there's the a way to shoot it without like actually shooting. Sh- it's them. hard to really discern you know between what? the shadows on the walls Forget of the light. It. Let's just shoot it. And the shadows in front of them. Actually, they all can blend together. If I enter the engagement, would I still be taking that? Nice. No. Well then, let's move into that engagement. Okay. All right. I'm charging. Ah! Charge? No. Not charge. Okay, just hustle. hustle. Oh, he comes forward for one action point. Boom! Fires the first shot. Yeah. Roll the strike. It is a uh, for you. It is a it is a um, standard test. All right. But you're point blank, I believe. So. Yep. And <coughs> standard sixty three. That is a forty five success. Mm-hmm. All right. Boom! It fires. It ricochets off the stone right. walls. I figured nothing would happen. But. Yeah. It does nothing. Ah! There's this explosion in your left ear, Banneker. What will you do now? You have one actual point left. Oh, um... Yeah, I'll just hold on to it. Okay. Alright, everybody re-roll initiative! I'll, I'll, I'll ask for your numbers in just one moment. Oh! Okay. Ward, what'd you get? 15. Okay. Elisa? 20. Nice. What's your perception bonus? 10. Okay. Banneker, what'd you get? 16. Okay. My first 20 roll. Nice. Fire. No, it was earlier. I'm getting little uh, erasable ones here soon. Terra, what'd you get? 17. That's high for Terra. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> Jeez. Really good. Okay. okay. Uh, Jonathan, what'd you get? 10. 18. Uh, yeah, nice. Okay, and then Harper? Eight. Oh, God. I might be a little bit encumbered. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Easily done. Elisa, you're first. What will you do? Is Elisa, then the thing, then Jonathan, Terrawin, Banneker, Warren, then Harper. Uh, so, Elisa. You can do it. So, Elisa is freaking the hell out right now. Her chaos alignment is totally in, so she's not thinking about the fact that she should probably attack the thing that keeps trying to attack her, and instead she's going to pull out her laudanum and use it. Okay. <laughs> So that's one action point. You have one step on the damage condition track. Damage? I thought London was peril. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, sorry, Mandric Root then. I'm sorry. Oh! So, man- so keep in mind that Mandric Root takes an hour to take effect. Oh, does it? Yes. Salt, yeah. I don't have smelling salts on me. Oh. Um, so you can, re- you can redo that and erase that. And- okay, alright. Uh, I did not realize it was an hour for effect. Um, yeah. Red cap mushrooms, mandrake roots. You'll be so high someday. One day. <laughs> Actually, yeah. takes a while to get high, man. Just react immediately. Sun, yeah, sun. I don't have any smelling salts, so that's not I mean, gonna. Cilia's um, got to get in your you, system. That's right. You drink orange juice. It's it's what. What do you do to like make yeah. you feel faster? I don't know. Yeah. All the weird like <laughs> urban folklore. Take it with peanut butter, man. It just tastes better. <laughs> It actually does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this is actually going to do anything, but she is going to attempt to uh, back it down. Sure. Because she's got nothing, and she's not getting close to that damn thing. So okay. I'm going to attempt to intimidate do a litany of hatred okay. against the shadow. All right. I'm going to attack the darkness. Oh, she's <laughs> screaming toward the darkness, <laughs> trying to banish it. You can hear her voice tremoring. Um, you have the, the, the tremor in her voice. Uh, what's your current damage condition track? Damage, I am moderately wounded. Okay. It's going to be a challenging test. <laughs> okay. I don't have any intimidation either. Well, it wouldn't matter. I mean, I'm down three skill ranks. <laughs> challenging, eh? Alright. 33% chance. Okay. Uh, that's 
Nope. Nope. She's gonna try it again. No, no, what I, uh, what I meant to say. It's a more difficult writing. I know. Down. Incompetent. It doesn't matter. She's not thinking yep. straight. That's two action points. Yeah, uh, and that failed completely as well. And so now she's just gonna kind of cower, holding onto her torch and hope that nothing attacks at her again. Okay. She's gonna standing with a torch in hand, kind of recoiling from the shadow. And that's when the thing, <sighs> sensing the fear in Elisa, will make his first attack. Sixty percent. 24, it's hit. <laughs> you suffer six corruption. Yay. Unless you have an action point. Uh, I do. You do. You want to try to dodge? Oh, can I dodge Yes, this time? you may dodge okay. using coordination. Okay, I couldn't dodge before, so. Uh, okay, well, it doesn't matter if I have coordination, which I don't. But I have a 45% dodge, unless because I'm moderately wounded, does that go down? No. Okay. No. That was cocked. Um, that was a critical failure. Oh no! I'm telling you, my dice are trying to kill me. Elisa man. staggers back, falling to the ground, the torch burning beside her as the thing reaches out and grabs her. Touching her, at least. You get six corruption. Yeah. Uh, 13 physical peril. I'm out. And you lose 1% brawn automatically yeah. as you suffer another brush with death. As she is touched by this darkness, she's her whole body is rigid, and she begins screaming at the top of her lungs. Banneker, you are there as well for a second attack. It will reach out, 50%. That's an 8% to strike. Would you like to dodge out of the way? Do you have any action points? Nope, I used all mine, thinking that I would be able to strike it three more times, So, because I forgot about whatever this is. Okay, so... You said for six corruption. Thirteen physical peril. And must resist the routine resolve test to avoid a brush with death. Alright, I'm gonna re-roll unless I'll take that. One. I rolled 82 twice. <sighs> You suffer a brush with death. As you can see, gray streaks along the frayed edges of his hair as you lose one person from bronze permanently. That brings us to Jonathan. I lit that torch last round. I'm going to right. swing it at it with all of the might that I can muster. It is a standard simple melee test. Standard simple melee. He has 53. Red first. Uh, critical failure, 55. Oh, Two no. off. Oh, no. As he Thanks lunges forward with the torch, he loses grip in his own impatience. Or his, his kinetic, you know, he's a very kinetic person. He throws it almost accidentally, looks at this hand, and stands before it. You lose the torch as it tumbles past the darkness toward the door. Oh. You can see the shadow is kind of extremely frayed at the edges, almost like, um, like moth-eaten cloth. You can see... You can see through it in parts. Like there's visible tears in it where you can see the wall beyond it. Can I maneuver towards it and get the torch? Sure. It's two action points. That's it. Okay. He comes and grabs the torch. Terwin, what will you do? Finish. Uh, torch is lit for one AP. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you have two AP left. And then I'm going to uh, uh, say everyone, come on, we've got this. Just need to keep lighting it up. And so I'm going to try and pull everyone together, do yeah. inspiring words. Okay, go ahead. What's your damage condition track? Really? Lightly wounded. Okay, uh, that is going to be uh, standard. Standard leadership. will be 58. 49 will succeed. Okay. Everyone gains plus one peril, plus one damage to lead into combat. Threshold it is. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to see if I can light this thing with the lantern one more time. With the lantern? Yes. The lantern is is, is no longer lit. You just, I just finished, finished it. Oh, that's right. My apologies. Okay. You take the lantern and swing it like a melee weapon or throw it like a ranged weapon? Uh, melee weapon. Okay. Ha! Make a standard test. Okay. Uh, this will be 50%. Zero six. Okay. You six. lunge out through the darkness and it does nothing. Roll 1d6 chaos die. 
Five. Okay. The lantern is weeks out once more. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. That'll be it. Okay. Banneker? Um, yeah, I guess hit it all three times. Okay. The first strike is standard. Oh, four hits it. Okay, let's roll damage. Alright, that is uh, 12 points. 12, okay. The thing the phrase once again is now a challenging test. The second one hits it. That is 12 points again. again. And the shadow breaks apart upon this as you strike him for the final time with a naked flame. The shadows begin to part and fray and kind of scintillate, kind of pulling apart like threads until the shadows return back toward the cavern walls where they stop for a moment. And then they flicker and move with the light of the lantern. This is where we'll end our game session for tonight. One of reward points. Yay! Oh, no. Spooky. Yep. Thanks for eating all of our uh, our, our uh, fortune points. Oh, there. I would have eaten more. <laughs> I know you would have. You would have literally eaten them all. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, that concludes tonight's session of Queen of Embers. You got uh, one of the reward points, saw a little bit of the changing initiative, some of the effects of using multiple attacks, and banished the shade <clears throat> for now. So, uh, it was just Banneker who banished the shade. Really. Yeah. yeah. The naked flame is the key. So, let's roll a corruption roll for tonight. So, first off, let's do a corruption tally around the Good. table. Uh, Harp, or sorry, Warren? Or, sorry, Warren, what do you have? Six. Six? What about yourself, Jonathan? How did you make it through with only six, considering this is just a corruption factor? I got zero. I'm surprised you just didn't roll around in it. It's nothing. close to <laughs> Halloween, apparently. I'm costuming as you guys, because I got an 18. Oh my gosh, so it's one chaos ring, <laughs> and then you may get another. What about We're yourself, Manicur? Okay. Uh, okay. Terrible. I got wow. myself a six. order. Six. Ring. Okay. So. I was gonna say you didn't get any. Yeah. Corruption roll for tonight is one. Bump bump two. <laughs> Ugh. Send me an angel. All right. And I'm incapacitated. Oh, that's right. <coughs> no problem. You gotta read, the, gotta read the, uh, the heart attack rules in the back. You get it again. That's some you get. Bad ticker or um, another drawback. There's other fun things that we talked about a while ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thanks for playing, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listeners, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thanks for your patronage. Cool. Yeah. Thank Bye. You. <laughs> Bye. A depressing episode. <laughs> we had a spooky, spooky episode for Halloween Eve.